lovely, delicious butter chicken recipe. Now here I have taken 200 grams of chicken boneless breasts and cut them into thin strips. To this I am going to add 2 tablespoons of thick yogurt, 2 tablespoons of ginger garlic paste. I will uh, leave the recipes of how to make homemade dahi or yogurt and ginger garlic paste in the description box below. This is 1 tablespoon of Kashmiri red chilli powder, some salt to taste and 1 tablespoon of lemon juice. Now mix all of this really well together and cover it and keep it aside for 15 minutes. Now I am going to add half a tablespoon of oil to my pan as well as half a tablespoon of butter. Mix the two together well. Now once it's nice and hot I am going to add one medium onion chopped fine. That's about one cup of onion chopped fine, 1 tablespoon of ginger garlic paste. Mix these two together really well and fry it really well. Next goes in 1 tomato that I have chopped fine. Mix all these three ingredients really well on a low to medium flame. Next I am going to add 1 teaspoon of Kashmiri red chilli powder. Now since butter chicken is not very spicy, we are using Kashmiri red chilli powder instead of using red chilli powder. Now I am going to add 1 fourth cup of water. Mix all of this well. And I am going to add 2 tablespoons of cashew nuts. Now mix all of this really well together and you are going to cover and keep this for about 15 minutes on a low flame till all of it comes together. Now this is very important that you cook it on a low flame, keep checking it in between and then once you open it after 15 minutes you will see that all the water has dried up. Turn off the flame and transfer this to another bowl and let it cool completely. So now once I have transferred that to another bowl in the same pan I am just going to add about a teaspoon of oil. Once the oil is nice and hot I am going to uh, add the chicken pieces which we had marinated. And we are going to fry these really, really well. So see, you can now see how the strips are. So do cut them in strips because butter chicken does have strips of chicken. And for that you need to use boneless chicken. So just cut them into long strips and marinating it is also very, very important. And then just keep turning them at intervals. But ensure that they are nicely fried like this. And fry them in batches. Don't put everything together in one pan make it into two batches that way everything gets evenly fried they should look like this and then transfer them to another plate so now our paste that i transferred which we had fried for all the onions cashew nuts tomatoes has cooled down completely ensure that it is cooled down completely don't grind a very hot mixture and then once you grind it you'll get this lovely orange paste now turn the flame on under your pan on a low to medium heat and transfer this paste that we've ground to the pan and just fry it for about half a minute without adding any oil or anything, just the paste. Now this is the water that we uh, you know, get when we uh, rinse the mixer jar. So add that, just about a half a cup and let this gravy nicely cook on a low to medium flame for about a minute. Now after that I'm going to add half a teaspoon of garam masala. This is again homemade. I'll leave a recipe of how to make your homemade garam masala. And I'm going to add one fourth cup of thick cream or you can also use milk. The thick, you know, the layer of that cream that comes on top of the milk, just add that. Now we're going to add some salt to taste. First taste the uh, mixture and then add salt to taste. And since butter chicken has a little bit of a sweet uh, tinge to it, we're going to add a pinch of sugar. So I'm using powdered sugar. Just add a pinch of it. Now cook all of this really well and now once it's cooked you're going to add all the fried chicken back into the gravy. And that's it guys, turn off the flame, just add a little bit of cream and garnish it with a sprig of kothmir koth or coriander. And that's it guys, your lovely butter chicken is really uh, delicious and really is lovely whole wheat roti recipe. So here in a bowl I've taken one and a half cup of whole wheat flour. To that I'm going to add half a teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda, some salt to taste three 
table teaspoons of yogurt and a little bit of water about 6 to 7 tablespoons to make a nice soft smooth dough so now you're going to knead this dough adding a little water at a time till you get a lovely super soft consistency and then you're going to drizzle a few drops of oil and again knead the dough and then we're going to cover and keep this dough aside after we kneaded it really well for at least an hour so just fold it up like this tuck it in like this and then just cover and set it aside for at least an hour now after an hour again just knead the dough and you will see that it has become really super soft and really easy to work with now you can keep a pan for heating up on a low to medium flame like you would for a regular roti or chapati dust your surface with a little bit of whole wheat flour and take a large lime sized ball of the dough and you're going to roll this out to a little bit of a thicker kind of a roll not as fine as you would with a with a chapati or a pohi but a little bit thicker so say to about an inch thickness and then you're just going to brush a little bit of water very little water but evenly brush the water all over the roti and now we're going to put this on the pan with the moist part facing down that is the part which you brushed it with water that is going to be facing down just evenly let it stick to the pan and once you see it to fluff, you know it begins to fluff up a little bit just turn it over now increase your flame to high and just cook it you will see that you have these small kind bubble kind of uh, you know it starts to bubble up immediately so roast it evenly see that there's no raw part of it but that the roti is nicely evenly roasted on a high flame and then you're just going to cook it on the other side too for about half a minute or so and then just loosen out the edges and you'll see how nice and roasted it is on the other side now just roast it for a little while on the other side too directly on the pan and now you're going to just take it out onto the pan onto a plate now you're just going to apply a little bit of butter you can apply butter or even ghee if you want and then I like to uh, sprinkle it with a little finely chopped garlic and finely chopped coriander and that's it guys your whole wheat roti is all ready to enjoy with any of your favorite dishes so i hope you like today's recipe i'll catch you soon this is akshita signing off bye So friends let's see today's lovely recipe of keema pao which is super easy so now in a pot i'm going to heat one tablespoon of oil now let the oil heat up really nicely on a low to medium flame and now we're going to add two medium sized onions that i've chopped fine now fry the onions really well till they get a little bit translucent now once the onions are nice and translucent we're going to add one tablespoon of ginger garlic paste so this is homemade paste i'll leave a recipe of how i make my ginger garlic paste at home that is uh, take five cloves of garlic large cloves of garlic and one uh, inch of ginger and then the rest of the recipe uh, you can see how i make it at home and now fry the onions and the ginger garlic paste really really well together you should get this lovely aroma of the onions and the ginger garlic and now i'm going to add two green chilies and fry the green chilies also really well together now once all of the these three ingredients are nicely fried 
I'm going to be adding one tablespoon of meat masala. Now this is ready-made meat masala, but I always add this to my keema and it comes out really, really amazing. Next, I'm going to add half a teaspoon of turmeric powder or haldi powder. Again, mix everything well together. And now I'm just going to add about one fourth cup of water. Since we are adding powder masalas, we don't want the powder masalas to get burnt in the oil. So I'm going to add the water. And the minute you add the water, you'll get this beautiful aroma of all of the masala, especially the meat masala. So now just mix everything nicely together. Now I'm going to add two and a half teaspoons of Kashmiri red chili powder. So the Kashmiri red chili powder adds a lovely color. It doesn't make it very spicy. We've already added chilies to, uh, you know, to make this a little bit spicy. So this just enhances the color. And again, I'm going to add about one fourth cup of water. Again, mix all of this really nice together. And now once everything has come together really well, we're going to add 200 grams of mince. Now you can use any mince, that is beef, chicken, mutton, whatever you regularly use. This dish goes with all kinds of mince, even soya if you're, uh, you know, keeping it wedge. And now mix all of this really nicely together. You want all of that bagar to go, or food be, to go really well into the meat. So mix it in well. Now we're going to flavor it with some salt to taste. And again, mix everything nicely together. Now because we added the Kashmiri chili powder, we'll get this lovely rich color. And now I'm going to add half a cup of water because now we want to cook the, uh, the mince really well. So that's why we're going to add a little more water. And now to enhance the flavor, I've just taken two teaspoons of kasuri methi, crushed it up and added it. Now this kasuri methi really goes well with keema. It really makes the keema flavors, you know, stand out. And now I'm going to add one tablespoon of chopped fresh coriander leaves. I've retained about a teaspoon for garnish later on. But now when I'm adding the coriander leaves also, you know, flavors this keema really well. And now I'm going to cover and cook this on a very low flame for 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes, when you open the lid, you'll see that everything has come well together. So now just put off the heat or turn off your gas and just add a little bit of coriander for garnish. And now when you're serving this, just add a little bit of butter, about a teaspoon of butter or a half a teaspoon of butter. Some lovely sliced onions and definitely some lime and some nice fresh pao. So friends, let's see today's lovely recipe of custard tarts. Now I'm just going to dust my surface with uh, flour and I'm going to roll out this puff pastry. Now I'm using a ready-made puff pastry, but I will leave a link of how to prepare this. Now I'm going to grease a muffin tin with some butter. I'm going to take any round, uh, you know, object like a vati or if you have a kind of a mold and just cut them up into six rounds. Then I'm going to place them into my muffin holder. Just ensure that the pastry is in line with the muffin holder. It shouldn't be too much outside or too, you know, uh, halfway. It shouldn't be halfway through the muffin. It should be exactly touching the tip of the muffin holder. And just dab down the bottom or the base of the, uh, the pastry. And we're going to set this aside. Now we're going to prepare the filling, which is a custard filling. Now for that, I've used one and one fourth cup of milk, two eggs, three fourth cup of powdered sugar, that is sugar just run in my mixer and made into a powder, one teaspoon of cinnamon powder, half a teaspoon of vanilla essence and two tablespoons of corn flour. Now I'm going to take a nonstick pan. I'm going to add the eggs and I'm going to beat the eggs really well. So you can directly put all your ingredients into the pan in which you're going to cook the custard. You don't need to put it into a separate bowl and then add it over here. Then I'm going to add the vanilla essence. I'm going to add the cinnamon powder. 
and I'm going to whisk all of this very very well next I'm going to add the powdered sugar so you can use icing sugar for this or you can just take regular sugar and blend it in your mixer and add it now let all of the sugar nicely dissolve there should not be any lumps of sugar ensure that one for that you can use a whisk next I'm going to be adding in the milk and again mix everything really well together Now last and not, but not the least, I'm going to add the corn flour, which is the thickening agent. And I'm going to mix everything so that the mixture is lump free. We don't want any lumps in this mixture. Now I'm going to place the mixture on the gas top on a very low to medium flame and continuously whisk it till the mixture thickens. But it shouldn't be so thick that I cannot pour it. So it should be thick enough but of a pourable consistency. So the minute the mixture starts coating the back of your spoon, you know, then means your mixture is ready. It shouldn't be too runny or it shouldn't be too thick. It should be like a porridge consistency which can be poured. Because now we're going to run this mixture through the sieve, through a sieve or a strainer. And then, so you can see all of the, whatever was, you know, the cinnamon which was not ground properly or whatever remains back. And then I'm just going to pour this mixture into these uh, puff pastries. At this time, I would preheat my oven to 200 degrees Celsius or 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 10 minutes. Always preheat your oven. And then I'm going to bake this at 200 degrees Celsius or 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 15 minutes. It all depends on your oven, so keep checking them. Once they become golden brown like this, once they're out of the oven, let them rest till they're completely cool down before you demold them. And your lovely custard tarts are all ready. You can enjoy this with a lovely cup of tea or coffee.